The greatest horses, the ones who will teach you the most and change your life, are never the easy ones. They are the ones who try your patience at every step, who make you doubt your abilities as a rider. They may push you to the brink of giving up, to your very last wit, only for you to persevere and rebound stronger. The great horses are not the easy ones, but that's what makes them so phenomenal. I first came across Milo's adoption ad when viewing another older horse available for adoption. When I first saw his ad, there was an instant connection, almost like a gravitational pull. For whatever reason, despite him being listed as a yearling and well under the age I wanted, I knew I simply had to see him. My mom and I went the same week I called to inquire. He was suspicious, nervous, but overwhelmingly curious and full of life. He had an attitude, a spirit that burned bright like the sun. I had no idea what I was getting into. All I knew was that I needed to have him. I wish I could say our connection as a team was as instantaneous as my desire to adopt him. It wasn't. I was impatient. He frustrated me with his stubbornness and unwillingness to be told what to do. Milo was too spirited to easily take direction, and my training style at the time was to demand, rather than ask, whenever I got frustrated or felt he wasn't listening. I had to take a step back and develop a new approach. Only then did we start working together as a team. As Milo and I built trust in each other, things started to get easier, and we had less arguments. Keyword is less. Milo would still decide that he was doing whatever he wanted, when he wanted to. Quite often. The difference was, it was more so for him to release his abundance of energy alongside my company and less to get away from me. My theory at the time, and one that I still believe, is that Milo is constantly making up for his lost childhood. He was too sickly to be young and play as babies should, so as he got healthier, he had an excess of energy that he had never learned how to appropriately deal with. So he would have antics and what people would view as disrespectful behaviors, but really they were just expressions of his excitement or joy. For example, during one of our photo shoots with Quinn Saunders photography, Milo saw another horse walking by on the trail, and he decided he was done with the photo shoot and proceeded to take off and go for a romp around Campbell Valley Park. And I had to chase after him. Things like this certainly weren't unusual for Milo at a young age, but he eventually learned how to appropriately cope with his energy and be more respectful about it and work with me instead of against me. Milo's favorite thing to do as a young guy was to buck and strike, and it still is. This was a move of his choice when the wind ruffled his tail, when he heard a weird sound or felt the need to impress an especially pretty mare, or gelding. The opinions of strangers on why he did this have varied from, he is scared, or he is stressed, to, he has kissing spine, or he hates you and you're a terrible rider. The reality of the situation is whether he is alone in the field or packing a rider, he would do his ballet just the same. Why? Because in Milo's world, joy and excitement cannot wait. Energy needs to be released immediately in some way or he may spontaneously combust. As we grow and learn together, expressions of such excitement have become more manageable. I choose to allow him to express himself in certain situations in some way rather than stifle his spirit because I've found that it makes him sour, less happy to work, and in a lot of ways can damage our partnership. So instead of disciplining a lot of these excited behaviors, I encourage him to replace them with more constructive ones. Milo needs to have a job. Some of his most viewed videos of his antics are because he had a day or two off, or a week, or two, or maybe it was because he was rehabbing an injury in previous years, or the weather was especially cold, or he just hasn't been getting worked enough for whatever reason. A bored Milo is an angry Milo. Milo is a survivor. If he were turned loose in the wild, he is the most likely one of my horses to actually survive. This survival instinct has posed one of our greatest issues in the show ring because he is just so unbelievably hot and reactive off property at times. He is brave but suspicious and likes checking things out first, unless they're natural obstacles he'd find on the trail. He is not inherently trusting of people, especially men. His personality is cat-like if I had to describe it. Milo is the type of horse that needs reassurance for everything. He loves praise and works well off of it. Punishment is generally not the way to go with him at all. 
which is why he would have suffered in a lot of traditional training programs. Due to being mishandled and abused prior to his rescue, he is very standoffish and will be ready to fight if someone is ever rough on him. Because of his unique quirks and behaviors, he is never a horse that I would keep in a traditional boarding situation. Instead, he has been out on 24-7 turnout, or at least with an in-and-out paddock attached to a stall since I got him. The last three years, I've had him living outside 24-7 with a shelter. Milo is a nightmare if he's stalled too much. He takes out any inconvenience in his life on those close to him. When we've had to stall him for injuries, he becomes hard to handle and aggressive at times. Why? Because you can't really make Milo do anything, and if you try, he seems to remember and hold grudges. Our partnership is a lot about asking nicely, especially at shows. I have to cater to him and the mood he is in on any given day. Milo has taught me a lot about patience and how to get the point across in the softest manner possible. He's taught me that a true riding partnership with a horse should be about mutual enjoyment not overpowering the horse and trying to break their spirit and silence any opinion that they have. In owning Milo and sharing our journey together, I've noticed a lot of sad things about the attitudes people have towards horses. Numerous times I've had people comment on videos of him being silly, stating that he's disrespectful and needs a beating. Seeing things like this has reminded me time and time again how lucky I am to have been paired with Milo. I feel as though we were meant to find each other. He has made me a more compassionate and patient rider and trainer. Working with him has taught me so many valuable skills that I can use to work with other reactive or previously abused horses. Without Milo, I would not be where I am today in my career and as a rider. I have him to thank for how far I've come in my riding as well as the creation of my training business, Milestone Equestrian, which I named after him. Milo has made me into the rider that I needed to become in order to offer professional services. He's opened my eyes to the faults in myself and in the general outlook the horse community has on horses and training. I owe everything to him. Our journey into the show world as a pair has been slow due to Milo's mental setbacks as well as my lack of finances, but I am so glad I've been able to start moving up on the horse that I owe so much to. I'm not in it for the glory. I wouldn't trade Milo for any other mount. The victories with him are so much sweeter and I hope we can continue to get experience moving up the levels as a team, but at the end of the day, I'm happy staying at whatever level he is comfortable at while producing other horses with the knowledge that I largely owe to working with him. I used to feel ashamed of the fact that I don't have the same rated show record as many other riders my age. but. Working with Milo has taught me that there are a lot of important riding and training skills that showing the circuit will not teach on its own. The lessons that working with rescue horses and problem horses have taught me are so incredibly valuable. Milo has made me a rider that can produce horses from the ground up and while I have not yet had experience showing large tracks, I know one day I will get the chance on a horse that I produce myself and I look forward to that day. But until then, I'm completely and utterly at ease helping people give their horses a good start to riding and working with horses who are at risk. Milo has taught me that being comfortable with myself and who I am as a rider will always come above what my show accomplishments may look like on paper. But still, I have him to thank for our recent successes in the A circuit ring and hope to welcome many more in the future. Even the classes Milo and I show in currently may look small to many, but realistically the journey there has been like climbing Everest. I know in my heart that those who criticized my journey with Milo would have given up on him, and I'm so glad that I changed to suit Milo instead of staying the rider that I was when I met him. Milo has taken me on a road that has led me to rescuing more horses and making more of a difference than I could have imagined. I am so incredibly thankful for that and for the growth that he has brought me. The last five years working with Milo have been such a blast. I'm so thankful that I've had the privilege to work alongside this horse for so long and cannot wait to have many more years with him. Thank you to everyone who has followed our journey. I would like to remind all of you that you are stronger than you think and if you have patience and perseverance, you can accomplish more than you would think. I appreciate all of you who have been so loving and supportive the last five years. I also appreciate those who weren't. Those who criticized and cut me and Milo down. The victories are so much sweeter when we can achieve things that people told me were never possible.
With a partner like Milo, I can never really lose. The greatest horses are never the easy ones. They are the ones with fire in their souls and a spirit so ferocious that the ground rumbles when they touch it. They are the ones who make you question yourself, who change you for the better. The ones who mold you to suit them, reminding you that a good rider is one who is adaptable, not one who breaks horses down and disallows them their individual opinion. The great horses are the ones who humble you. They remind you to be compassionate. These horses show you what riding is really about and prevent you from being led astray by the temptation of glory over the well-being of the horse. The great horses remind you that glory and horsemanship go hand in hand, and that you cannot be truly victorious without loving the horse who brought you to the podium above anything else.